Love Hello, and Love Hello Fan Expo. How are you? Wow, look at this crowd, so early. I love this. Well, this is a wonderful, wonderful time to be here. You guys seen some good costumes here? Oh my goodness, I just ran into a turtle, like actually ran into one. Uh, <laughs> my name's Paul Sapp, and I'm gonna be moderating this panel today. And I know you know this is a special one to me. I mean, I grew up watching these guys, so this is a thrill for me. I know it's gonna be a thrill for you to watch this because it's pretty obvious that we have a lot of Cobra Kai fans, but how many people go back to the Karate Kid, right? So you know that this is going to be a wonderful panel. So let's give a big round of applause to our stars, Rob Macchio, William Sutton, Cobra Kai, everybody. There we are. How are you doing? Step into my office. <laughs> Where should we sit? We need a director. Yeah. Okay, who wants to sit down? No. You guys want to sit here and I'll sit over here? <laughs> you sit there, we'll sit here. All right. You guys sit there. I think maybe there's a uh, special guest joining us. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> when Paul comes, we'll get up and he can sit. We'll get up. Yeah. How are you guys doing this morning? Yeah. Wow. Well, we're so excited to have you guys here because, you know, uh, the Karate Kid was such a treat for all of us, you know, up a certain age, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and it continues to be a treat with our kids, and now we get Cobra Kai, and it's just like, it's like the gift that keeps on giving, right? That's exactly what we say, and just every chapter is another, uh, another win in this magical franchise, and we are uh, on the ride of a lifetime. And, and of course, uh, it brings back all kinds of great old memories. And is, is there something the first time you stepped on set and you just go, wow, something just came back to me? Well, <laughs> everything, you know, when we started the show, it was, it's a brand new idea. It's 30 years later. Um, you know, the Johnny that I left off in the 80s, you know, had four guys with him. And uh, suddenly Johnny's solo, he's drinking beer, he doesn't even have a fish, he's got a beard, and he's watching old movies. And all that new stuff was really fun. And it was a new experiment of who is Johnny Lawrence today for me. But the time when it, the lights turned on for us, I think for all of us and for the show, was the first scene that Ralph had, where Ralph walks into the dojo in and, and episode one, and Daniel and Johnny see each other for the, the, well, the second time, but now in the dojo. And there was, that was our first scene together, and it was just this, this moment where he walks in and says, you know, I heard you're picking on some kids, and I say, what kids? You know, I beat up a bunch of bleep, bleep words, you got any kids in here? A bunch of <laughs> a-holes who had a comment, and it was just this kind of, um, just Daniel and Johnny were personified and living in us at that moment, and it was palpable, and it was in the room, and it was real, and it was new, and it was fresh, and everybody knew it, the guys behind the camera, and as far as all the fun we were having with the new characterizations of Johnny and Daniel, that's the core of the show, is, is, is their relationship, and it started off at that moment and kicked it into gear, and I think it was a big relief and kind of this feeling of, okay, this is really here, it's organic, it's really happening, so I think that was the moment, at least for me. Yeah, no, uh, me as well. We talk, we talk about it all the time because, it, you know, it was, for me personally, that day, that moment where we played that scene out, it was, um, it just became so crystallized in my mind that we both shared an experience from two different perspectives. You know, uh, me as LaRusso and, and as Johnny Lawrence and what that has been for Billy and Ralph as actors 34 years over time. There's not a lot of folks or even performers that have that, you know, and and so there was a history that was even unspoken. And I guess that's the thing. There's an unspoken element of richness in in how we uh, addressed each other through some great dialogue that just uh, was a perfect storm of wow, this is this is meaningful and and popcorn fun, but relevant and deep all at the same time, and entertaining as hell. Well, and to get loved on all weekend by such wonderful fans, have such great questions and such cool costumes. What kind of cool costumes have you seen this weekend? 
Uh, well, you know, I always know when a con has arrived at the level it should be when I see the shower curtain uh, with the polka dots. <laughs> and, and I saw that the moment I walked in the building. There was someone, I was walking to my table and someone had the shower costume. Usually I have to wait like an hour or two before I see one. Um, so that, that's easy for me. Go ahead. I used to see the Cobra Kai, the guys show up in Cobra Kai's, you know, uh, geese and outfits and it used to be like, oh, cool. But now it just feels normal. Like if I see somebody in a Cobra Kai gi, it's like, hey, what's up? No, it also used to be like, boo, when you saw the one Cobra Kai. Yeah, that's right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, all we're missing is the capes on the back, the superhero capes. <laughs> uh, love that. And, uh, and of course, Dallas is such a, a fun town to be in. There's so much to do here, so much great food, barbecue, beer. What do you guys get to do when you're when you're not doing all this? Or is this it? Try to sleep. We're like we're, we're like we're like zoo animals. They roll us in a cage. They bring us out to you guys. They feed us. They throw us back in the cage to get some sleep. And they roll us back out. I swear to God, I haven't seen anything but the inside of a car, elevator, and you guys since I've been here. And I'll see an airplane next, and I won't even know I was in Dallas. Yeah, it's it's a pretty you know pretty condensed uh, schedule. I did get out to a dinner last night. Uh, the steakhouse was like twenty of them. Every you went out to dinner last night? Yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't invite William. It's okay. I needed a break, folks. I needed. I had a Texas Cobb salad in my room, and it was the, awesome. That's the best. The night before was room service. That's my favorite. I, I, you know, but uh, yeah, for the most part, you know, we need our energy for for this. So uh, maybe 25 years ago, we could have done both, gone out all night, and showed up. <laughs> a little tougher these days. So happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, of course, you know, now of course you're making new memories uh, on the set of Cobra Kai. Is there, is there, has there been a standout Cobra Kai memory that just is like, that I will never forget this in my life. It's just been so special. I mean, there's, there's too many to choose from. Because yeah. it's, uh, you know, the, the cast of the show is so amazing. The young cast of the show is so inspiring to us. And then when we get the chance to play in the sandbox with some of the original OG characters from the films, that goes to another level. It's really hard to pick one. Uh, recently, you know, Yuji Okamoto has chosen in the show has really been uh, rewarding uh, to watch and see the, the fan love for, for him in that performance. But that's one of them. Absolutely. How about for you? Oh, man, I don't know. I mean, like, the first thing that comes to my mind is what Ralph just kind of hit on is the young cast. We've been doing these characters for a long time. You see these new kids and these new cast flourish. I, the, the, the school fight just sticks in my mind as just one of the classic signature parts of the show. And Miguel falling off the balcony and the, the tables were turned at that point. Um, so that's something. But all of it, we were getting to work with the OGs. You know, I, one of the most meaningful episodes for me was, when, I think it was two, uh, when I got to work with the original Cobra Kai cast. And, you know, the guys, Ron and uh, Tony and Rob, rest in peace, Tommy. Um, uh, that was really special. You know, we did that scene and we were supposedly in Big Bear and we were out of fire and hanging out. And um, those guys became my best friends after Karate Kid. We hung out for many years after that. We stayed in touch all the time. And we did those trips to Big Bear. We actually, in real life, would go to Big Bear. And um, I remember actually a time I had this Honda Accord and I don't know, I had all three of those guys in my car. We were zipping around, going up in, in Big Bear. I can't believe I'm telling this story, but I'll do it. And uh, it was cold. And um, so I was just kind of hot shotting and just pulling up the emergency brake on these uh, on, on these turns and we were sliding out and everything and they were like, you're gonna kill us. I don't know what I was thinking. Don't ever do that. But uh, Kids, just remember, I, just, <laughs> I just kept pulling the emergency brake and sliding out of these big turns of this snow banks and stuff in Big Bear. But um, anyway, that was the, the, working with those guys was was really special and I'm glad we got to do that. When we started the show, the first, the only thing I had in my apartment in Atlanta when I got there was a picture of the original Cobra Kai's was a, just a black and white of all of us at the Karate Kid tournament on my wall and um, I was kind of paying tribute to them and bringing them with me and kind of missing them because Johnny worked as a team with those guys and it felt weird to just be solo um, and uh, so to have them come back was great and then all the other cast I mean everybody that's come in I love working with every one of them it's all it's all exciting it's we turn the pages and um, we're constantly entertained by the, the writing and, and we're having a great time uh, acting this stuff out and playing it out for you guys 
Oh, I love that. Well, you know, one of the great things about these conventions is we have such wonderful fans with thoughtful questions. And so we've got microphones here so we can hear everybody. And uh, let's go ahead and start uh, over on this side over here. Hello, my name is Josh Mendez, and before I answer my question, um, Billy, Ralph, thank you so much for coming, um, for making another trip here in Dallas. You guys make my day so much. You are my favorite heroes for Friday Kid, and I love you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So my main question on, on during that set on the very first Friday Kid way back in the 80s, uh, what was it like at the end of the production and during on set when you guys were like fighting each other at, fight, fighting each other at the end of the movie on the finals of the Friday? Yeah, that actually uh, turned out to be the last thing we did, where uh, very often is the case you shoot so much out of sequence, um, but it, in that case it ended at, at the All Valley Tournament, and we were well trained and prepared, we had months of time where we'd work on the routine, the fight, and uh, we'd start out you know, with pads on and, and more distanced, and each week we got better and better and closer and closer to a point. It was really like a, a you know choreographed tango or a ballet for that matter. And so we ran that fight a bunch with like six cameras, almost like theater, as opposed to little pieces. We did break it down and do the little pieces as well, but it was um, it was pretty thrilling. You know, I got to win every time, so it might have been different for Billy, but it was. I lost one time, I think. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and uh, that's where the crane kick was born, you know, what has been captured on film and has been part of uh, pop culture and cinema for decades. It's pretty, it felt special at the time, but in no way did I have any idea I'd be sitting here in 2023 talking about it and, and, uh, and it being so revered, you know. It was, it was a magical time, man, and it still is, and having the Cobra Kai series and everything else and whatever's in the future because this this franchise just continues in some way really really special time thank you so much and should we go over here hi guys um, just to echo what we said before, I just want to say thank you both for being here. I had the chance to meet you both on Friday, and both uh, really wonderful, um, so thank you for that. Uh, my question is two parts. Uh, first part, were any of the quiets improvised, or were they all scripted? And part two, uh, do you guys have a favorite improvised either line or moment, either from yourself or a different cast member? The, qu the quiets are all scripted. I can't, I can't recall if I threw one in. Um, the first time I saw that, we were just doing a rehearsal. This is just Ralph and me and Ralph and, and the producers at Sony just on the lot, just going through it. And it was the first time I ever saw quiet. It was all in Q-U-I-T-E-T, capitals with four exclamation points. I'm like, oh, they, they were real quiet here. So I just went for it and uh, they busted up laughing and I was like, okay, really, that's funny? And it's turned out to be quite a thing. And it's used in households all across across America now <laughs> to get their kids in shape. Um, so as far as did I, have I used it, uh, I don't think I ad-libbed any quiets, um, but, I, but I may. Um, as far as uh, ad lib stuff, uh, I don't know, I can't remember. I mean, a lot of it, some of it's just uh, on the fly, we just, something will come out, but I can't recall anything. Yeah, it's, it's tough to, I mean, there are, there are some I just, um... And nothing, nothing's coming to mind as the one ad lib that, you know, we, we certainly have the freedom when we do the scenes, and, and uh, but I, I don't have one quick off the top of my head that's, that stands out as the most, um, I don't. I one don't. of the ad libs I think is a, is a verbal, I mean a physical ad lib for me was the bottle cap thing, that wasn't scripted, that was just something I came out when Miguel was doing the, the mats in the original, in the first season I opened a beer can and did the flip and that's kind of turned into a little thing, in fact that now Sam's doing it to, right, to right. Daniel in one of the later episodes, um, so that became a characterization thing for the character. Um, you know, I wish, I don't know where Paul Hauser is, but he has the yes. improv master, so you guys remember the scene at Home Depot when I meet him the first Oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, Singray ad libs, I mean, he's so amazing. All that stuff, like 80s stuff, like, you, there should just be a reel of him going off about explaining all the, the, the things from the 80s. He only could pick a few seconds of it, but he's hysterical, so. Yeah. 
Who is he? Maybe he'll show up. There's a seat waiting for him. <laughs> well, I, I, did a, you. I did a panel with him yesterday, and uh, his, his stories are amazing, if you've ever heard his clip. So he had a solo panel. Who's his agent? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh Oh, he already did his panel. That's why he's not here. Oh, he, he refused to work with us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back over here to the, your left. Uh, hi, I'm Shane, and my question is for Ralph now. I want to, another one of my favorite movies of yours was Crossroads, and so I was wondering if you had any interest um, in the blues before um, taking on that role. Um, yeah, Crossroads is, um, uh, I did, I love the blues, I, and I certainly did a deep dive into it once I, once I was, uh, you know, prepping to make that, that film, so I'm, I'm still obsessed with, with that music, it's the birth of rock and roll, it's a true American music, it was born, you know, born in the Delta, in Mississippi, it's really kind of fascinating to see how, when you look at bands like the Rolling Stones and Eric Clapton, and um, how they they you know fed off of Robert Johnson and the, the birth of that that music at that time. So um, I still it's on my playlist all the time. Not just Crossroads, all different types of blues and and I love it. I'd love to see a continuation. There's some talk about trying to find a way to you know d discover that Lightning Boy Martone in his 50s or 60s somewhere and and. Uh, so I always hold out hope that these these projects that uh, mean something to people will get not necessarily the Cobra Kai treatment because it's just super spectacular, but maybe there's a continuation of those stories. But uh, thanks for bringing that up. You got to beat Steve Vai too. <laughs> I love it. All right, uh, over here. Hi. Um, one of my favorite movies from Ralph is The Outsiders. Did you ever try to audition for any other one, or did, or did you try to audition for Johnny? Um, uh, thank you. Yeah, The Outsiders is a special one. Um, certain, no, no actors came out of that movie. They're all has been. <laughs> um, the, yeah, I wanted to play Johnny. I really did. Uh, I did read for Pony Boy. I read one scene. I was two bit and I was terrible. Um, and, um, and I don't think I read for any other, but any time, because it was a very, it was a big group audition, I just wanted to, to only play that part. Like, I didn't even, everyone was playing different parts, different actors, we grabbed their scripts, and, you know, you had Tom Cruise reading Dallas, and you had uh, Dennis Quaid reading uh, a Soda Pop, and it was really pretty amazing to be there. Um, um, but, uh, so I got to read for a few of the other roles, but I got the part that I wanted, and it was, you know, that's super special, you know. Anyway, that's all I gotta say. Stay gold, pony girl. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> I love that. Actually, you know, I've been I've seen so many young people uh, out here, not only today but around the convention, and they look up to you guys and they think that's what I want to do. You know, just and, and is there any kind of advice that each of you could give to these aspiring actors? Actually, show of hands, how many aspiring actors or actresses we have out here? Some of them, some of them over there. Yeah, there we go. What what advice would you give to them? It's a big one. The rest, the rest of the actors are all working, right? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, listen, I started when I was, I was 12. I did my first commercial. I, I met some, some really cool kids yesterday. Actually, we're talking about acting, and um, you know, the first thing is, is like I started when I was young. My dad was in the business, and he said, just treat it like a hobby. Treat it like a sport. If you're gonna, if you're gonna fail at it, if you get, if you get rejected, and you come home crying, I'm just gonna pull you out of it. Just go have fun. Don't take it seriously. Hold it loose. And so that was my, my, my attitude about it always. So I did hundreds of thousands of interviews. I mean, I auditioned for Outsiders. I didn't get as close to the room as these guys. But um, I, I auditioned, and my, my list goes on and on. So you fall down a lot, you gotta push forward. But I always tell the kids, dream, if you have it in your heart, there's a way. And there's no real way to say, this is what, check this box, this box, this box, it'll lead to that. If it's in you, you're gonna find a way. Find a local agency around here, get some pictures taken, go out, do some extra work, um, do plays, do theater, make stuff on your iPhone. We couldn't do that in our day. The internet's amazing. You can make your own movie, put it on YouTube, it gets a million hits, and some agent in Hollywood's calling you, for real. Like, it's a different day. Um, so if it's in you, you know, there's two things too I always say, like, if you, do you want to be an actor or do you want to be in movies? 
things. You know, there's two different kind of things. If you just want to be known, I would say don't do it because it's it's an empty world. But if you're an actor and you want to feed on and you want to express yourself and be a creative person, um, you kind of have no other options. Like, I don't know what I would do if I was an actor, really. You know, I mean, I might have been a doctor or a physicist or something like that. Um, but uh, I say go for your dreams. You know, I was 12 years old when I got my SAG card. My first thing was a Kool-Aid commercial, the milk, dial soap, pizza. Commercials, commercials, commercials. It's just, you know. And then when I was 17, 18, I read for a movie called Karate Kid. I didn't know karate. I never rode a motorcycle in my life. I thought there's no way. The last thing I did was a milk commercial as the all-American boy. I'm not going to be cast as this bad villain, karate champion gang, motorcycle gang leader. It's not a chance in the world. And look what happened. So, you know, and I remember, I remember being a high school kid, I remember doing plays, I remember doing theater in high school, and my drama teacher wasn't really supportive of my acting career outside of the stage. She goes, you have to choose if you're going to go on auditions or if you're going to do Guys and Dolls. And I said, well, I want, I, then I'm not going to be in Guys and Dolls. And so I went and, and my first little spot was on The Greatest American Hero. I had one scene, and they happened to film it in my high school where they were rehearsing Guys and Dolls, and they had to cancel the rehearsal for the whole week so I could go and do <laughs> One episode, one scene with uh, William Cat and Grace and the Hero. Did we hear that story? Yeah, so it was like, you know, um, and then I graduated high school and I went into film and I wanted to be a filmmaker. And I was going to Cal State Northridge studying film. Um, when Karate Kid happened, and the crazy thing about that is that's where we filmed the final fight scene of, was at Cal State Northridge. So there's this weird thing about, like, maybe go to school. <laughs> go to school. But, I don't know. I have so many things to say about it. You got to keep like a buffet of things that you're interested in. Keep your hobbies, keep, especially keep your family, keep yourself grounded, and you know, don't take it too seriously. Don't throw everything in that basket, but get experience, work, 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 and it can happen. There's no reason why it happened for us, you know, and it can't happen for you. Um, whatever that is in your life, whatever that is in your life, dream, you can envision it, it can happen. Awesome. That's so well said. What would you say about that? I can't top that. That is like perfect. My, my, you wrote that for I me, know, right? I know. I said it to That's you last what you said night, the last show. You memorized it perfectly. You didn't miss a syllable. <laughs> um, um, yeah, that's. A, I wish I had a teacher that gave me that speech. Um, no, that was great, Billy. I mean, that's that, that's it. You know, creative arts and, and expressing yourself, There's the, you can always do that. Um, whether you can make a living at it, whether it becomes a, a place where once you have a family you can support it, that's a, that's separate. But, you, but as a young person, um, and, and, and alluding to the fact that the internet or having an iPhone, or, you know, we didn't have that stuff, so you couldn't make your own content. And, uh, and nowadays, they're casting movies and television, and they're looking at the YouTube to the ones that have the, the influencers um, over sometimes, you know, what you would consider the proper actor. And it, so uh, there's, there's, uh, there's different avenues to take um, and, and, and follow that creative dream. Why not? You can now. Yeah, well said. Uh, let's go back over here. Hello, my name is Grace, and I'm a big fan of the original movie. However, y'all did a cameo in How I Met Your Mother, and my question for y'all is what was it like working on that set? That was great. I just did one episode. Uh, Billy did a bunch of them, so he, he could probably uh, take it take it further. But those guys were great. They embraced us in such a great way. They were super fans, so we were kind of, you know, royalty to them. But we were, but they were to us as well. And uh, very often, you guest spot on a show. You feel like you're running alongside a train, or you're at somebody else's house. And that that disappeared right away once we got on that set. It was uh, all supportive and, and it was so much fun. And it was so much fun to open it up to a young audience that that, uh, that watched that show. All of a sudden, you know, people were renting the Karate Kid movie that hadn't seen it before of that generation. But we, no, we can speak. Yeah, no, it did. It gave a great kick. It, it, it made uh, Karate Kid in a new way. It refreshed it um, for, for fans and made it re somewhat relevant again in a new way. Um, it was my experience for it. They came to me and said, I just got a call. If you want to do an episode of How I Met Your Mother? 
without reading the script, I said, yeah, of course, I'm in, I'm in. So then they send me the script, and um, there's, a, there's a, you know, all them, and then there's Ralph, and there's a clown, 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 and then at the end, the, the clown is me. <laughs> and then I have one line, and I thought, well, that's a safe way to bring me on television, is just put me in a red nose, and it's, you know. <laughs> um, but it was, a, it was an amazing experience, those guys are, you know, it was a, they're top of the line, they're the, the best, and um, they made us feel really welcome, and uh, it was awesome. And then it spun off into another, I, I guess, another little story arc they did for me, which I owe so much to that, and to those guys that are coming in a funny idea of who Billy Zabka is, the misunderstood hero, and the 80s bad guy, but he's really a nice guy. And, um, and I was really standing on their shoulders doing that, and I'm forever grateful for them and that whole experience, it was, it was amazing. I actually just did an interview with Neil, he has a a blog that he puts out, I mean, he was asking me about how 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 I met your mother may or may not have inspired Cobra Kai, and there's some, there, you know, there's some great answers in there, so uh, it was great, really, really thankful for that, still, you know, somewhat in touch with those guys, and, um, you know, you're lucky when you get a shot like that. Let's go back over here. I'm, I'm sorry, we could only kind of see shadows here. They got the highlights on us, but uh, uh, whoever's next, right there. Hey, William, as a friend and peer of Ralph, I wonder if you have any thoughts on his performance in The Outsiders. Well, can Ralph... I'll, I'll hear Ralph. I'll hear <laughs> Earmuffs. I don't know. I, what do you guys think? La, 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 la. <laughs> I mean, listen. I, I, I love the. I read the book Outsiders before. But I remember when it was when they were auditioning for it. Saw the movie. I was in complete awe of Ralph when I first met him. Not anymore. I got to know him. I get it. But <laughs> but I was a huge fan of the book, and I was a Cop Coppola and everybody in that movie. I mean, that was the our generation, my generation. That was the movie. That still is. So um, you know, I was just I was just floored by his performance. And, I mean, I think he overacted here and there a little bit, um, but for the most part, he held his own. <laughs> it's a classic, what do you say, you know? It's flawless, the movie's flawless. It's a piece of art. All right, let's get back over here. Hi, my name is Wyatt. What are your hopes for the final season? I hope we get four more seasons after that. <laughs> right? The party's not over. I know the guys, that, 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 you know, we've done, we, we had a chance to film at least one of the episodes, and we'll get into it, but I've heard the guys explain how if every season of Cobra Kai is like a dinner, um, Co Co season six is like Thanksgiving, and every episode is going to just outdo the next one, it's true. Yeah, they, they, they have a handle on, from day one, on what they wanted with this show, and obviously the longevity of it was, you know, thanks to you guys uh, responding that well to it, but they, they were always surprised. It's kind of Christmas morning every time we get a script, you know, sometimes surprising, sometimes jarring, and other times just, you know, totally fist pumping, but uh, um, I think the goal has always been, you know, for it to come to a very satisfying uh, conclusion in some way, but always with the door open for another avenue to take. Is this? Uh, I think there's more to come, whether it's Cobra Kai proper or other areas in the Karate Kid universe. Um, as long as you guys keep coming to the party, we'll we'll keep playing the music. Thank you, and you, man, William. Thank you, Wyatt. Say hello, hi to your mom and your brother for me. <laughs> Love it. Uh, back over here. You owe me 20 bucks. <laughs> hi, my name is Elizabeth. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for coming. Um, you're a staple in my house, like this movie. My dad raised us on Karate Kid. And my brothers and I, we act out the scene. Probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Um, but my question is for Billy, because in Karate Kid we see Johnny get a redemption, and so watching Karate Kid, you, you kind of see it from a different perspective of Johnny. So what's your favorite part about his redemption arc in Cobra, Cobra Kai? Well, I mean, I would say this, this is, you can Google this, so, so uh, but uh, you know, when I read the script, I, I didn't really, I didn't get Johnny Lawrence until the very last few pages when the priest says sweep the leg and he doesn't want to, and at the end when he hands him the trophy and says you're all right, LaRusso. Mm -hmm. To me, 
that was the key to who he is, and I go, oh, that's him, that's the me in him. Now I gotta reverse engineer that and play the bad guy into that moment and be, be in a trance, a Cobra Kai trance. That was like kind of subtext to it. So, I mean, for me, I mean, I, I didn't see him as pure evil. Maybe you could say,